Sound Sleuth Lab. Left testing one, two, check. Testing one, two. Today on Sound Sleuth, we're going to turn the OPA Alice into a drum microphone, which means we're going to pad the mic. This lets us take a much louder sound into the microphone without overloading the rest of the signal chain. We're going to do what Neumann and others do and put a small capacitor across the mic capsule. Neumann uses a 560 picofarad on their U87. I've seen anywhere from that value to 47 picofarads used for padding. Our capsule is smaller and thus has less capacitance overall, so we're going to use a 220 picofarad capacitor. This gives us roughly 15 to 18 dB of padding. We're going to put this right across the 1 gig resistor on the microphone's printed circuit board. The first mic is from the original Instructable I published using through-hole components. Here you can see R11, which is the 1 gig resistor. The second microphone uses a pre-built board from JLI Electronics. I have this one fully disassembled so that you can see the capsule as well. Here's the resistor after soldering on the capacitor. I modified six of these and brought them into the studio to try a few things out. You know, like stereo mic and a snare and a hi-hat. Let's listen to those and then let's check out the fully mic drum kit and hear what it sounds like with these exceptional microphones. Full disclosure, there's a sub kick on the kick drum, but no EQ, compression, or gating on any of the tracks. I did add a touch of plate reverb on the snare for the full mix, but not on the stereo snare track. All right, let's see what it sounds like to stereo mic a snare drum. And now, let's stereo mic a hi-hat.
And finally, let's mic the entire drum kit with OPA Alice microphones and a sub kick. Everything is padded except for the two overhead microphones. Sound Sleuth wants to thank Wynton McLean, today's drummer, and Stephen Mix, who owns the studio that we were able to record in. <laughs> 